powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Jill Valley, And I'm Dennis Bragg. The University of Montana is bumping up security for a controversial right-wing lecturer who will be speaking at the Denison Theater tonight. Mike Adams is a professor at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. He often targets members of the LGBT community, Muslims and feminists in the column that he writes. MTN's Kent Lutzen joins us live from the Denison Theater where protesters are already starting to gather. Kent. Thanks to Jill and Dennis, various groups on campus have come out here to demonstrate as Adams is set to speak at 6 p.m. tonight. Now this has led UM police to increase their security. I'm standing here right now and I can see multiple police presence officers right here and Adams himself all day had a personal bodyguard. Adam, Mike Adams was invited to speak at the University of Montana's annual Jeff Cole Distinguished Lecture, but was met with backlash. The UM School of Journalism has sponsored the lecture for the past nine years, but pulled out after Adams was selected to speak. Adams writes for townhall.com, a conservative website where his column often targets LGBT people, Muslims, and feminists, and he has described transgender people as mentally ill. Many students and faculty believe this hate speech, while others believe it's freedom of speech, leaving UM police officers aware of the potential dangers tonight's speech could entail. Um, yeah, in addition to having more officers present to respond to any uh, potential problems, we also have a canine uh, sweep the area for, for any potential threats. Um, you know, we'll be screening people as they come in the doors and, um, you know, just, just having a, a larger visible presence um, and also just communicating with other local agencies uh, as, as to our plans for action um, should things escalate. UM Police is working with Missoula Police Department. We will be staying on campus to uh, make sure if any updates are happening. Um, reporting live in Missoula, I'm Kent Lutzen. Back to you, Jill and Dennis. All right, Ken, thank you. And again, we'll have a full report of tonight's event coming up on the 10 o'clock news. Turning now to weather, we did see some sunshine out there today, but wintry conditions are going to return before too long. In fact, there are some new advisories just issued. Here is Chief Meteorologist Aaron Yost. Yep, we just got those in and they take shape here very late overnight tonight during the early morning hours. Tomorrow will last through Thursday morning across western Montana. The exception, the Missoula and Bitterroot Valleys, but we're going to get to that in just a second. Here's what today looked like in the Bitterroot. Hamilton's view from the first security bank eye cam. A lot of blue sky. We've seen a gorgeous day with a very nice mix of clouds and sun. But if you look off towards the northwest of the Idaho Panhandle under our Doppler network banner, you can start to see some of that moisture moving closer. And here's a look at those winter weather advisories that have been issued. We are looking for two to six inches here in the valley shaded in purple. We've got a full forecast update coming up. More than eight years after the mill closed, the Environmental Protection Agency says it's getting closer to a final cleanup plan for the old Smurfit Stone Mill site. However, it still remains to be seen whether the community will accept a plan that likely will not call for a comprehensive cleanup. EPA officials have spent more than a year narrowing down sampling and working with the responsible parties, the former and current owners of the mill, to develop a plan for cleaning up a variety of contamination from decades of cardboard making operations. Most of that analysis has focused on the core of the mill property, where most of the contaminants have been found so far. However, Missoula County and groups like the Clark Fork Coalition have continued to insist the agency must take a more comprehensive look at the holding ponds and other areas adjacent to the Clark Fork River. Tonight, EPA will be explaining the cleanup plans they've been developing and answering questions from the community at an informational meeting. It runs from 7 to 8 at Frenchtown Junior High School. Also, EPA officials from the Montana Department of Environmental Quality will be there to answer questions. Stevensville Mayor Brandon Dewey says the fire department is his life and he'll plan to return as a volunteer if a future attorney general's opinion supports the idea of him serving as both mayor and firefighter. Dewey is agreeing to step down from his job as a volunteer firefighter after getting pressure from the town council. The council voted unanimously Monday to ask for Dewey's immediate resignation from the fire department where he's been a volunteer and administrative assistant for several years. The panel was concerned about possible conflicts of interest with the city attorney saying his service falls under state law that addresses incompatible positions. When we run for political office we also need to be aware of our duties on both sides being a politician and being a community member. 
Dewey followed in his father's footsteps as a firefighter, and he thanked his fellow firefighters and supporters in the audience for their support and teaching him leadership. I have family in the fire department. My very best friends come from within the fire department. My mentors and the advice they lend me comes from the fire department. My ability to be a good husband, father, and person were learned from the men and women who serve or have served this community. I am the leader I am today because of you. The question of whether a mayor can also serve as a firefighter is being posed to the Montana Attorney General's office. And Dewey is making it clear he'll reverse his resignation if the AG issues a more definitive opinion, allowing him to wear both hats. It is more important to me that we continue to govern for the people who elected us than to dispute this any further. With that said, it is, if it is the opinion of the Montana Attorney General's office that the office of mayor and being a volunteer firefighter are in fact compatible, I will reconsider my resignation and may rejoin the service. Dewey says he feels like the request was a personal attack. Montana cities and counties will soon be getting some additional road maintenance money thanks to a 2017 increase in the state fuel tax. State transportation officials say this increase has raised about $6 million in new money for cities and towns. Flathead County is going to get the most of any county overall at nearly $180,000. Local governments can start applying for the money on March 1st. The $6 million is on top of $17 million already allocated for local governments, road and street maintenance, and they determine how much money that's going to be based on how many miles of road and other factors are in that area. Billings will get the biggest allocation of new money this year at $655,000, while the town of Rexford in northwestern Montana gets the smallest amount at just $1,100. We've been coping with a lot of current frigid temperatures right now, but Missoula area organizations are pushing a slightly more summer-like conversation to the forefront. The damage from the 2017 wildfires has created opportunities in the off-season as private landowners are looking to keep their property from being destroyed later on. MTN's Augusta McDonald has more on our story. When I see trees like this, I get super excited. So I talk to them about like, hey, you have amazing trees, but there's some stuff going on here that we could we could give them a better chance. Zachary Basher's young land management company found its niche helping private landowners mitigate the land around their homes, which helps create a defensible property in case of wildfire. He recently joined the Forest Resource Committee of the Missoula Area Chamber of Commerce. The chamber and their board of directors and the entire community is just showing such interest in why things are happening the way they're happening and what the community can do about it because they're hurting. The chamber's recent State of Missoula banquet hosted researchers who discussed how to move forward from the economically devastating 2017 fire season. We don't have a choice over eliminating the inevitable extreme wildfire, but we do have a lot of opportunity, a lot of choice over the characteristics of the immediate of our homes and our immediate surroundings. Basher said he received calls this fall from private landowners with questions on how they can avoid property damage this upcoming summer. On these private lands where fire has been suppressed for almost a century, you have duff layers this deep. I mean, we I've I've fought I've fought a few fires on some private lands and it's the worst thing ever digging into. He's able to soften the expense of mitigating overgrown land by selling some of the wood products from the project and finding grant money to pay for the work. I'm just trying to be the link between private landowners, loggers, contractors, mills, and our forests. That's my entire passion is just helping people create a healthy and sustainable relationship with our land and their land. Augusta McDonald, MTN News, near Potomac. Coming up, a natural grocery store coming to the Southgate Mall this spring. We'll have an update on their construction. And how a fundraiser in the Flathead is helping the homeless through art. Stay with us here on MTN.